I'm in a Nissan NV, but this is not a normal Nissan NV. This is, in fact, a camper van. And next to me is Steve Shank, who is, uh, well, the proprietor, the owner, and the guy who thought this up, uh, Recon. It's called the Recon. The Recon camper, and this is actually the NV, ENVY model. Oh, ENVY. So you, a little bit of fun you, there. you kind of twisted it. Uh, and it's uh, about as small of a camper as you can get. In the U.S., correct. Yeah, it's very similar in style to what Volkswagen used to sell here, except maybe, you know, let's call it 70% of that size. And the cool thing is, it's going to be available at your local Nissan dealership very soon. And coming up right now, we're going to tell you everything you ever want to know about this badass little hashtag van life recon van. Uh, so tell me about why you decided to go with a Nissan for this van. So this is the NV200 platform, which is their smallest commercial van. Um, we chose it over the other US available platforms because it's actually a flat floor pan, front to back. Mm -hmm. So it's not a passenger van with a drop floor pan, so you have the stadium seating, but it's a full flat, like the old Econolines, front to back of the car. You've got higher windows, so you've got a lot more wall space for cabinets. You've got real small wheel wells, so we were able to bring our seat up and over the wheel wells and get a 42-inch wide bed in a car that's very, very narrow and small. This is a very European style van, let's face it, right? <laughs> How'd you get it, the idea to do that? I mean, you know, most of our um, campers, RVs, are these big kind of, you know, traditional things <laughs> that, uh, you know, are not very off-road worthy, but yet here you have a very small, very tidy, van that is actually something that's very livable. Tell me how that idea came to you. So I spent about five years of my life living in a Volkswagen van okay. when I was very young, so 20-some right. years ago, and uh, I was doing a job uh, where I was in Europe every six weeks, okay. um, an engineering job, and I just kept seeing these vans, and I kept thinking, God, I want to get out of L.A. and travel, but I can't get a Class B in L.A., you know, they're too, too high, too long. Yeah, and I said, I'm going to buy a small van, and I started looking around, I'm like, there's no small vans. There are no small vans. So I just, you know, I originally, I honestly built it for me. <laughs> You know, I just, I wanted a way to get away from the city, have my daily driver, not be spending a ton on gas. We're running 25, 26 miles to the gallon. And I just wanted uh, my little escape from LA pod. And it's our joke off that uh, film, as it was just built for people to get out of the city and enjoy. Now this seat cover, did you do this yourself? No, no, this is uh, Wetakoli. Okay. They're, uh, that actually translates into wet bum in Hawaiian. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a company out of Hawaii that a lot of overlanders actually use to keep their factory seats nice. It's a oh, really nice. So is this something that's like an add-on or you did yourself? It's one of the options. So yeah, they, yeah. they made it for us. For oh, nice. That's nice. It's got extra pockets. It's got compartments there. It's got sunglass holders. It's got wallet pockets. So this vehicle is obviously a pop top, which is a big part of uh, of the design. It's a it's a small vehicle, about five inches shorter than the new Toyota Camry, which most people, when they go inside, they can't understand how this can be shorter than a Camry. Um, pop top gives us an extra bed. This exact vehicle's got a few extra builds on it for this overlanding trip. We've got um, some Method wheels and some Yokohama tires, and actually Yokohama makes a 205 Geolander tire, which is what all the 33s, 34s are, but in a little size to fit on this. Um, special things about it, we've got an awning on the side, we've got a bike rack that's mounted on the door in the back, which for us is very important because it's above the rear lights. It's a tray style, so it protects all your you know, expensive carbon frames. It allows you to fully open the door with your bikes completely loaded so that you can have full access to the back of the car without unloading everything like a normal uh, bumper hitch is. We've got a lot of different storage compartments. All of our hardware is stainless steel. It's actually marine hardware. Um, solar port plugs, so you can actually run an external solar panel. 
It also is a direct line to the battery, so you can run a big battery charger. You can run lights off it and plug in. We've got more storage back here. Obviously, this one's full of a lot of our gear. Our solar panels in here, two sleeping bags, pillows, sheets. We have a three gallon water heater that runs off the alternator, so you can heat up three gallons. It'll stay warm for about eight hours, so by the time you get to your place to camp, you got hot water. We've got a rear shower port, which is pretty special. Um, rather than the huge dual knob, this has got a built-in mixing valve, so you stick it in the hose and you turn the hose a little more, a little less, and it gives you hotter, colder water. How, uh, how many gallons are in the uh, van? We've got three gallons in the water heater and we've got 10 gallons in so board. 13, 13 total, and all our water's inside our water pump and all our water lines except for one drain line, so a little more freeze resistant, which is important for us because we go a lot of places. Window covers is a big, big thing for us. We want to make these as thermally and acoustically quiet as possible. These are actually multi-layer um, covers. They're a high radiant reflective barrier on one side to keep the heat out, and they're a quilted thin slate type material inside. Fully magnetic, custom built for every single window. So when you put it in, there's zero light and zero heat coming in and out. Um, we spent about 10, 12 months testing different materials and trying to find something that would work. What's this? So that is a bike repair stand. I believe that's unfortunately in the front of the car, but I can grab it, but it hooks right in here and you can hook up your bike and work on it and stuff. Cool. If you want to come back around later, I can yeah, pull that out. Yeah, that enough weight? Can you hang a bike up? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. These doors are commercial doors. It's a commercial van, yeah. so. And I can see you can open them completely, right? You can this one you can open 100%. Yeah. Uh, this particular door, we limit it if you have a bike rack so you don't crash the bikes into the car. So we limit this one at uh, a 90 degree. Okay. Let's see the inside. Okay, perfect. To pop in the top is pretty simple. We've got two latches just for extra safety. We've got two simple straps. So we've got four different systems and just give it a little push. And the whole top goes up. This has actually got a bed board up in here where you can close it completely and sleep up in here. Or you can open it 100%. I'm just gonna move, we have all our window covers up here. It's a great storage area when you're, uh, when you're traveling with a lot of people and a lot of gear. So we've got um, main lights, pop top lights, we've got mood lights, we've got exterior mood lights. Everything's set on dimmers, as obviously I'm six foot four. And you can see we got a lot of room to move around. We've got three screened in windows that basically allow um, lots of airflow. Big part of our design that we thought was very critical for a type of vehicle that would be a new entry RV or a new entry overlander would be the uh, control panel. So basically you have every single thing in the car run off one simple seven inch touchscreen. You have smart battery monitoring so when your voltage gets too low, it actually warn you when it gets too low again, it'll shut it off. You have all your lights, all your dimmers, interior, exterior temperature. If you notice, we're 74 inside, 80 outside. Um, you've got your outlets, inverter, water heater, water pump, fridge. Everything is run in one panel. So there's no, hey, how do we turn the inverter on? Where's the switch for the water pump? It's all auto resetting fuses because it's actually not a fuse and it's all digital so you never have to find a fuse or anything else. And you got a refrigerator, I take it? Correct, we've got a slide out stainless steel compressor refrigerator that's a remote compressor. Uh, very, very efficient. We've got a stainless steel sink. This basically has got a couple designs. One is you can bring it forward, which is a good point to be able to drop the back down. And now we have a huge trunk in the back. It's uh, 42 inches by 25 inches deep, and that's where our bulk of our storage goes when you're driving around if you don't want to put it in the closed cabinet. Our bed itself, you're never going to have a comfortable seat, integrated headrests, and a comfortable bed if you do the typical fold it down flat, right? And I, I believe you've looked at some different vans. Ours flip over 180 degrees. So you're at the, you sleep on the bottom of everything. You normally adjust this outside, but since we're filming, we'll adjust it inside. So you sleep on the back side of everything. We've got breather in here. It's a quarter inch of a honeycomb, so you're not laying on hot foam, and now you have a completely flat surface. So you can have you know, one or two people down here, maybe one person on top, right? Yeah, I mean, we tell people, two people down here is actually quite comfortable because you have the walls. Um, one or two kids up top works yeah. pretty well. You can put every single seat at any angle you want. So you can make this a full lounger. I can drop this down. You can swing that up. 
I mean, however you want to put the seat for hanging out, for relaxing in your car. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we just, we wanted to make this comfortable. You can flip it the other way, so you can have this part up and be looking out the back door, you can be looking out the front door, you can put your computer here and watch a movie. Or if it's not level where you park, let's say you're parked like we are now a little down, you can just bring the side up a little bit. And now you don't have your head below your feet, which anybody who's camped in tents and stuff knows you have crazy dreams. <laughs> is that a, is that a so this is a, this is a large um, storage space. There's two shelves, one of actually stacked together right now, and then there's a lower shelf We've got a storage spot up here where's our charging port, your computers, your laptops, I think we have little solar panels, anything you want to charge is kind of up out of the way, you don't see it, it's a little bit out of people looking through your windows. And then we have obviously some plugs down here, we've got a shore power option on this one so you can plug it in if you wanted to. It's not necessary because the fridge will run about two days off the house battery, wow. and you start the car, it's a 150 amp alternator. So it's a little car, but it's a commercial, so they really oversize it. So 30 minutes and you're back to 100%. We also have the portable solar option, so usually about hour and a half, two hours of bright sun with the 120 watt panel we have, you're back to 100%. So it's, it's very easy to be off grid with this. And this flips down too, right? Yeah, this is this is yeah this is really nice uh, feature of Nissan's is this folds down completely. Let me put this back for you guys. I love the floor. Too. They're kind of like uh, hardwood floors. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually a really, uh, it's a Baltic birch, uh, waterproof with a uh, high pressure laminate, uh, uh, horizontal grade, which is the really thick. Yeah. Everything we did is aluminum, stainless, everything is pretty much marine. We try to build this thing to last. You've got the house battery under the passenger seat, easy access, easy to switch. That's an AGM plus battery, which actually runs a little bit higher voltage than a typical AGM. So you get a little more power. You've got a main switch to turn it on and off. So if you're not camping, just shut off the whole back battery. You don't have to worry about it. Just use it as a daily car. So, so the one thing you don't have, of course, is four wheel drive, right? None of these vans have four wheel drive. Correct, correct. Um, and it looks like you didn't have done a lift, but you've put a little bigger tire on it. So it gives it a little bit of that more meaty off-road look. We have close to eight inches. I think we're at seven and three quarters inches of ground clearance on about 115 inch wheelbase. Yeah. So, I mean, this was a big talk with one of the, the journalists that was on the drive here is, you know, a lot of people think you can't go on a dirt road unless you have four-wheel drive. Right. And they don't realize that you'll see today we're going to go 100 miles with a bunch of four-wheel drive trucks and none of us are going to need Air it. Air down. Air down, exactly. <laughs> we're at 36 right now. We're going to drop down to about 25 at this stop. You know, what's really ballsy is that that little van is actually doing the same off-roading that these lifted trucks are doing. It says a lot about the ability of a little NV with bigger tires to go on what is a pretty challenging course even for big lifted trucks.
thing. Little Bud's rocking it. Little Bud! I, I gotta be honest, yeah. these tires, we just put them on, they are night and day to anything we throw. Know. You know, taking a lifted truck off road, no big deal, but taking a van that's meant to like ferry, let's say dry cleaning, <laughs> <laughs> and putting you know bigger tires on it and taking it on a pretty respectable off road course is really impressive. I'm, I'm, you know, much. Uh... Thank you. <laughs> don't, don't forget, we got cold drinks, a hot shower, and two beds. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope we won't have to use that. In the huh? event we get stuck. <laughs> Another nice feature is the far door opens, yeah, which so. is not normal for uh, for the Volkswagens. It kind of was a little bit of a design confusion early on because we're like, now what do we do? There's a big hole there. We use it as an advantage. We basically put the access to our pantry out here so I can take my groceries or anybody can take groceries and rather than going through the van, which usually has climbing gear, biking gear, you can load your entire pantry out here. You can access it out here. There's normally a table mount right here, so you can put your stove right here and stand in an L-shaped kitchen, prep, cook, get your food. So these are little features that, like I said, at first it seemed challenging to figure out what to do with a hole in the wall, and then we realized it's actually a huge advantage. Well, the magic of this is kind of the same magic that the old Volkswagen van that you said you, know, you used to live in has, right? Yep. And that is you can use it both as a camper or just as your daily transporter, right? It's small enough where you can park it at home. It's not that unusable as an everyday driver. Correct, and that's a, lo a lot of our clients, you know, maybe they're only gonna camp four weekends a year. It's that much, right? right? Yeah. But every week we get calls, you know, I'll get stuck in traffic, I pulled over, pulled out my computer, sat down, said forget going to work right now, I'll go there an hour later, do work from here. But you know it's a 136 horsepower, yeah. it's a 3,200 pound vehicle only. So horsepower to weight, it's pretty much the same four as the cylinder. metric. Yeah, yeah, it's a four cylinder, two liter. Um, that's a big question we get. It's almost the exact same horsepower to weight as the Mercedes Metris, and which is 208. And you're getting about, what, 25 combined? We get about 25 combined. Yeah. Um, we put the bigger tires. We're going to drop a couple miles yeah, to the sure. gallon. Obviously, I think we got about 23 coming out here with racks and tires and, and all the extra weight. But we don't see a whole lot of change because we're pretty aerodynamic. We keep the, loop, the roof really low, low profile. A big question people ask about the height. Yep. You no, know, everybody wants to put it in their garage. Yep. We're six foot six with the crossbars. We're six foot two without. So if you guys are interested, uh, go to reconcampers.com and uh, yeah, give it a little few more months and then you'll be able to get these at your local Nissan dealership. That's going to be quite the uh, interesting uh, build up for you to go from, you know, being kind of a, a small manufacturer to having something that's available at dealerships. Well, guys, thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Thank you for giving us this walk around. As always, check out tflcar.com and tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, pretty cool camper van reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao. Well, you know, we just did a video on the uh, Volkswagen uh, California, okay. which is very similar to this, but obviously you can't get here. Correct. So you're, you're kind of taking advantage of the fact that Volkswagen isn't here. And it's actually a bigger van. This is much smaller. Um, and, and they're a lot more expensive. And they're a lot I mean, more. In Europe, they're 72,000 euros. Euros, which puts it at about 85 5, to 90. Yeah. yeah. And you're at 50,000, depending on how you sort yeah, it. Yeah. And this is water heater. Did that have a water heater? I don't even I know. I think it does. I don't okay. know. I was Nathan and Andre were on that program. Okay. <laughs>